just today, as of this recording, finally, and I'm so grateful someone did this, the Washington Post's Glenn Kessler, who did the debunking of Trump. He was really busy because Trump lied a lot. Uh, Fact-checked Biden's disastrous comment. And thank God, a reputable non-Arab, non-Palestinian, non-Muslim, because they don't believe us, said, by the way, this Ministry of Health numbers that that comes out with the casualties, yes, even though, you know, Gaza, because it's... uh, Hamas was elected. There's been no election, folks, in 16 years. In addition to the militant extremist uh, armed forces, it also, ha- you know, gives services, right? So that number of casualties, Danielle, you know who has relied upon that number in the past? The United States government, the State Department. You know why? Because it's generally accurate. You know who else has verified it and also kind of complements it? The UN. You know who else does it? Human rights groups, because the number it's it's this is the the worst part it's not an overestimation it's in almost as an underestimation but it has been very consistent because as you know this has been going on for years every couple of years there's a conflict right every couple of years there's a war so the fact that president biden came out and essentially perhaps mistakenly did israeli hasbara propaganda and discounted it for the us public you deny palestinians in life and you erase them in death. And I remember I tweeted out, and I think we talked about this on the show. I, I said, this is a colossal mistake, Joe, Joe Biden. For the love of God, please correct this. I know Muslim and Arab communities. Like this is, this will be the straw that will break their back, right? The next day, I think Kirby came out, doubled down on it, right? It's been a week and so far, no correction. And I can tell you, Daniel, before the latest polls came out, I want to bring this up. Yep. I can tell you, as I told you, as I said it on Twitter, Democrats, you made a huge mistake. Yeah. Because the rest of us who are trying to say, you know, to Muslims and Arabs who are like, I can't vote for Biden. I'm like, yo, please be cool about this. Think about it. I know it's terrible, but Trump will be far worse. Him being so callous with with us, with our own eyes, seeing dead kids. And he comes out and says, well, you can't trust those numbers. Uh, it was even for me, Danielle. I'm like, how, how do I contort my way? Like, you know, like how yep. do I convince people? And cause what it, what it shows and, and black folks in particular know this and we, and the rest of us should have been listening to black folks. What it shows is our lives don't matter. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares. Mm-hmm. And if they're willing to discount Palestinian lives, and as we know, cause they flatten all of us, a Palestinian equals an Arab equals a Muslim equals Hamas equals Hezbollah equals Jihad equals Hamas equals chocolate Hamas. It doesn't matter, folks. They all lump us together. So if the president is so callous yep. about these brown kids being killed, but we care about these white Ukrainian kids, God forbid, if this happens to me, who's going to step up for me? And I just want people to understand. You don't have to agree with it, but I want you yep. to understand how people are feeling. And I'm saying this right before I give you this latest disturbing stat that we have been mm-hmm. warning about on mm-hmm. this show. Mm-hmm. Poll came out yesterday. Arab American support for Biden's was 59% in 2020. All right. It fell even before this latest crisis. Do you know where it is right now, Danielle? 17%. Yep. And this is in the footsteps of the Gallup poll where Biden went down to 37%. And let me tell you all this, Michigan, uh, Wayne County, when Wayne County went Republican, Trump won. When Wayne County went blue, Biden won. There is about 250,000 Muslim and Arab Americans in Michigan, folks, and also Muslims in Georgia and in Pennsylvania. What do you think is going to happen? Here's the thing. And I, I, again, I just, I want to go back to the numbers, right? The, 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 the numbers that have been issued that right before this, this war were valid, right? For the United States and are valid for the UN and are valid for humanitarian, uh, rights organizations. Another stat had come out recently that said the first six pages, because they organized those names, those souls, whose lives were lost, the first six pages as you scroll have an age that says zero. Do you know why the Mm. age says zero? Because there are babies that didn't make it to their first birthdays and it's six pages fucking long. And so Mm. we cannot, right, say that there is justification. If you believe in humanity, I don't, 
care again about this side or that side. I say all the time, I'm not a foreign affairs uh, expert. I'm not a historian. I am a humanitarian. And there is no goddamn Mm. way that you see pages upon pages of names with ages that Mm. say zero that will never see one. Mm. Right? This is, this is, This is not just the casualty of war. And I see people in comment sections will say, blame Hamas. Hamas is not bombing humanitarian corridors at this moment. They're not continually telling people that we're in the north of Gaza, go to the south of Gaza. Those people go to the south of Gaza, then you bomb the south of Gaza. Right? There is (laughs) no place. Right. Or the refugee camp. There is no place. Here, where the Biden administration is saying to the bordering countries like they did for the Ukrainians, open up your fucking borders, right? Let's forgive people's debts, which are being, which those countries were saddled with debt because of white supremacy. We won't go into that, right? In the way that you can extract and extort and saddle people with debt so they never rise in power. Nonetheless, where is the push to open up the borders, to forgive debt, to provide a humanitarian quarter, because you see, when Putin doesn't abide by international law, they got tough words to fucking say, boy. They come out full-throated. Mm. But here, mm. we have a president that says, ah, I don't really believe the numbers. Got it. Got it. Disastrous. Disastrous. And, and you know, for people who are listening, they're like, well, listen, just shut the F up. And vote for uh, Biden. All right. Do you want the, that's? I'm, I'm, I'm just listen. I'm telling you how it's how people are processing it within these communities, Muslim and Arab communities. So your choice is you go for the guy who want to what to put you in camps, or you go for the guy who's so callous about Muslims being killed and says, "Hey, do you want me or the guy who puts you in camps?" It's not an appealing situation. It's not no. the best way to court no. someone. Hey, hey, mother effer, do you want to go to camps? No. Vote for Biden, bitch. <laughs> That's that pretty much like what, what, is it, what it says to us, right? Hey, punk ass, what do you want? Do you want to go to camps or not? Vote for Biden. And I'm telling you, people, not just Muslims, not just Arabs, not just black folks, because the black vote is also depressed. Uh, the young vote is also depressed, if you're paying attention. What they're saying, Daniel, is this. We're not dumb. We mm-hmm. know Trump is terrible. But we're not going to vote for Trump. But if you're asking me to be complicit in what looks like ethnic cleansing, what looks like genocidal language, what looks like war crimes. I can bring myself, Danielle, to vote for Biden. That's what folks are saying. Now, I still say, for the love of God, if I have to hold your nose, still vote for Democrats, okay? Because we know what's down the pipeline if, God forbid, Trump wins. And he might win now. Uh, But this is where people are, Danielle. And so for, for those people who say Biden or bust, it is not a winning strategy. It is not a winning strategy. And and, and if you're like, who cares about them Arabs and Muslims? Fine. I'm talking about white folks. I'm talking about young voters. I'm talking about black voters are now saying this. And another poll that came out on MSNBC yesterday, yesterday, a majority of Americans, including Republicans and independents, favor a ceasefire. 66% 66%. of all voters. which, Which shows you how disconnected power and this administration is from the majority both here and around the globe. And I will say this, right, that we have that number 66%. While you are seeing Biden's poll numbers go down, you are going to watch that number for a ceasefire raise, right? Because here's Mm. the thing. When folks are saying like, well, you know, what about World War II and what about this and what about that? I want you to understand a very clear thing. We had to rely on a handful of newspapers during that time to send photographs weeks, maybe months after the horrific actions would take place. We are watching Mm. this in real fucking time. We Mm. are watching Mm. access to water be cut, access to electricity be cut. We're watching babies be pulled out of rubble in real goddamn time. That is the big difference, right? Because what these, what this administration and Israeli administration is telling us is don't believe your lying eyes. Believe the words that are coming out of my mouth. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and right and, and, now, and, and, let me try, let me tell you something. I trust my eyes way more than what is coming out of everybody's mouth right now. 
And, and that's the game changer. And that's the game changer that people don't realize is that Netanyahu and Israel is committed to a long war. So this is like six months to seven months to eight months to a year. And if Biden administration is all in on this, he went to Israel, he hugged Netanyahu, all of it was disastrous. I kept saying it. And now they're stuck. What do you think is going to happen with the election? I'll say this, folks. I heard this for the first time. I'm telling you, I'm hearing this from folks. People are like, F Ukraine. They're like, they, you can yep. find $100 billion for Ukraine and you can find $14 extra billion for Israel and child poverty has gone up to 12.5%. F Ukraine. Now, who does that help? Putin, white supremacists, and yep. Republicans. And what Republicans said, hey, we'll, fine, we'll, we'll help Israel because of our white evangelical base. But guess what? We'll defund Ukraine and we'll defund the IRS. And if Trump was smart, what he'd say, and I hate to give him advice, uh, I'm America first. Uh, I don't think Netanyahu was mean to me. I'm going to not support that war and I'm not going to support Ukraine. Vote for me. Uh, uh, I'm going to take all that money and invest it in America. Don't you think that would be appealing to a lot of people who are pissed off yep. and on the fence? I mean, we know, that, we know that it would be white America that he's investing in when he says America, <laughs> then America first. Yeah, oh, we but, know. I, we we know. know. But, um, but absolutely, I think that the reality here is that um, when you are looking around and you are seeing our institutions deteriorate and you're seeing, as Tupac said, you got money for war but can't feed the poor, right? And we got mm. homelessness issues. 